hope that you are just having a blessed day. I hope things are good. And if things aren't going so great, just know that uh, I've been praying for you and I want you to know that, uh, that God is in control. Good times and bad times, whatever you're facing, God is in control. And I know sometimes that's not always easy to hear. It's easy to say, sometimes it's hard to buy into. Uh, but he is there for us. And so I hope uh, that whatever kind of day you're having, know that God is with you. But I hope it's a good day. I really do. So uh, we are going to be continuing talking about our um, the history of the world and creation. And we're going to be continuing in the book of Genesis today. And uh, so I want you to just kind of take a look. I want you to be observant and maybe see something that's a little bit different than the last time. Uh, that we talked about uh, creation. Uh, and you just look around the room um, and hopefully you'll see that. If you do, maybe make a comment down below uh, what you see the difference is. And I'm sure uh, we'll talk about that as we go through uh, our lesson today. Uh, but anyway, um, we are going to do a song right now. So check out that song and I will see you after the song is done. Enjoy it. Have fun. We'll see you in a couple minutes. Dogs, cats, 
and more than that. That's right, we're going to start talking about creation of the land animals. And uh, so we're going to be in Genesis chapter 1, and we're going to read ver just two verses today, just verse 24 and 25. But we want you to know that all living creatures were brought by God and created by God and brought forth by God. All the creatures in the past, present, and future. He is the author of their creation. And we want to be able to appreciate animal life and uh, to appreciate that amazing part of our world where we see these animals out in nature and uh, we see the animals that are our pets and we see the animals from history past that may no longer exist. Uh, and we want to appreciate all of those animals and thank God for them. You know, in Psalm chapter 50, verse 10, the scripture tells us that for every animal of the forest is mine and the cattle on a thousand hills. And this is God making that declaration. And so I want you to know that not only did God create the animals of the sea and the fish of the sea and the great beasts of the sea and all the birds, he also created all of the creatures that live on the earth. So let's take a look at our scripture right now and read that and then we're going to dig into this uh, a little bit more. Um, and while we're reading, uh, I have a couple questions I want you to think about. Uh, actually, let me, t let me share those with you after we finish reading the scripture, okay? So if we put, pick up our Bibles and we look at Genesis chapter 1, verses 24 uh, and 25, it says, Then God said, Let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing and beast of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beast of the earth according to its kind, the cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. And so I want you to think about what is your favorite animal? What is the thing that you like most? What's your least favorite animal? I know some people might say my favorite animal uh, is, a, is a dog or a cat or a pet of some sort, or maybe it's a horse. Uh, or maybe it's a wild animal of some kind, a lion or a tiger or a bear. Oh my, uh, it might be one of those. Uh, but you have maybe a favorite animal. I want you to think about what is that favorite animal? It should come really quickly to your mind. Um, and then what is your least favorite animal? What's the thing that's like, oh man, I don't think I like that. You know, is it, is it a scorpion? Is it a snake? Is it a lizard? Is it a frog? Uh, I don't know, maybe it's a platypus. Who knows? Um, but maybe that's your favorite animal. But think of the, the favorite animal and your least favorite animal. Is there one out there that sort of creeps you out when you see one or hear about one? You know, a few, a few days ago, uh, we were doing, I was doing a bike ride with a bunch of people and uh, we were riding with a group and we came riding along the trail and all of a sudden we looked off to our right and there was this gigantic big black snake crawling across the trail. I was like, wow, that was pretty incredible. And so we kept riding, and a little while later, we saw another one. And one of the people that was riding with me was like, I don't like snakes at all. And, and they were a little bit frightened, and it kind of creeped them out that that snake was slithering across the bike trail. But yeah, it was, uh, it was pretty cool to see. Um, you know, it's important to remember that God created all creatures, even the ones that kind of creep us out a little bit. Okay? So listen, if you had a piece of paper, um, maybe today or um, uh, maybe uh, a little bit later this afternoon, uh, I want you to do something for me. I want you to take that piece of paper and I want you to get out uh, whatever you use, crayons, markers, whatever it is, and I want you to draw and maybe color in uh, your favorite animal. And if you do that, and if it's okay with your parents, maybe take a picture of it and post it to our Facebook page. All right? Um, or just keep it for yourself or put a message uh, down there that says, Hey, Pastor Jerry, I drew a picture of whatever it is. And uh, I, that would be really cool to kind of see how, how many of you are out there doing that. All right. Uh, but anyway, let's talk about this. You know, a trip to the zoo, it can be a fun thing. We went to the zoo this summer, um, you know, and, and uh, you might see at our zoo here in Pittsburgh, if you've been able to go there, man, they have all kinds of things. They've got snow leopards. They've got gorillas, they've got lions, they've got tigers. 
They've got a polar bear. They have a huge aquarium with all kinds of fish and water life in there. Um, big tortoises, uh, elephants, giraffes, cheetahs, jaguars. Uh, man, they've got all kinds of animals at our zoo. Uh, just many different kinds. A bunch of different monkeys, a bunch of different reptiles. Um, hippos, the, the, the pygmy hippopotamus is there, uh, the red pandas there. I mean, they've just got so many different animals. Uh, but you know what? It doesn't have every kind of animal known to man. There's no whales there. There's no, um, uh, let's see, what else is not at our zoo? There's no grizzly bears at our zoo. Uh, there's uh, no, I don't think there's any gazelles. Um, there, there's a few, a few of the African Plains uh, hooked animals, but uh, I'm trying to think. Uh, there's a lot of animals um, that aren't there. Uh, the American uh, mountain lion isn't there. Cougars, no, no Florida black panthers. Um, so not every species of snake or fish are not, or there's, so there's hundreds of animals that we don't even uh, have at our zoo that we can think of. Uh, but truly, when God made animal life, he wanted the earth covered with many different kinds. It says here that the earth, God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind. Now, some people say the word kind is, a, is, is even a broader spectrum than species or genus or whatever, uh, however you label those animals. So, uh, for example, God created a dog. Right? But he didn't create every strain of dog. He didn't create um, you know, Dalmatians and Dobermans and Rottweilers and um, German Shepherds and Great Danes and Labs and Golden Retrievers and Springer Spaniels. He didn't, he didn't create in all those different breeds. He created the kind. And then from that one kind, you know, they tell us that, that dogs have descended from wolves. And uh, so there was one kind of canine, and then through that, adaptations took place over the course uh, of history and time. And even now, uh, we have people who breed dogs for certain traits. Uh, and I'll just give you a little bit of what I know. I don't know a ton, but I know a little bit. Um, if you don't know, my wife Gina uh, and I raise labs. And uh, my, my son Lucas helps Gina quite a bit with, the, with all of that. Um, back in the way back in the day, um, yellow labs were actually uh, sort of a real deep red color. They call it fox red, and uh, that was the original yellow lab. And one breeding happened, and a lighter color came out, a more yellow color. And everybody thought, "Oh, how cool is that? And how unique is that?" And so they started trying to breed that color. And so more and more yellow labs were being bred and they got that color and they got lighter and lighter and lighter and they almost bred the fox red color completely out and it almost became extinct in terms of that original color. Well, some years ago, um, someone said, you know what, we really like the original color of, of that deep red, that fox red color, and there's not too many of them, so we're gonna start trying to breed yellow labs into that red color again, and now you have uh, fox reds. And so when we breed our females, we get fox red color and we get yellow, and we also get black. And so, um, but that's adaptation. That's something that God has allowed within, within each kind of animal. Think about all the different kinds of cows. There's Jersey cows, and there's Black Angus cows, and some cows are, are bred for meat and some cows are bred for milk and, and dairy products. Uh, you know, and there's all kinds of variety of cows. Heifers is another strain of cow. Um, think about the different types of cats there are. You know, there's big giant lions and tigers uh, and, and panthers and, um, you know, pumas and snow leopards. And then there's domesticated cats. You know, there's all these different strains of cats, but God made one kind. You know, it says here that there is the cattle and then the beasts of the earth. And that quite can refer to the dinosaurs of the time. 
You know, I believe through creation, and if you believe the creation story, which I do, and I hope that you're also hearing this and believing it as well, is that dinosaurs existed in the past, but they had to coexist with mankind. And so there was a time when man and dinosaurs lived together on Earth. Can you imagine living in the time of dinosaurs? Wow, how incredible would that be? And how protected did you have to be uh, from those creatures? And how you had to be smart and wise about that? Uh, but those were all uh, created after their kind according to these scriptures. And so God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, and it was so. And this verse gives us three main classes of animal life. Uh, God said, bring forth cattle. And the next, he said he made cattle after their kind. And when you think of cattle, you probably think of beef cattle or dairy cattle. You know, and I've listed some of those names. Angus, Hefford, Shorthorn, Longhorn, uh, Chario, Charioles, and Brahmin. And then there's dairy cattle, Jerseys, Guernseys, Ashire, Brown Swiss, and Holsteins. The word cattle uh, in Genesis 124 and, and 25 includes animals like beef cattle and dairy cattle, but also means all kinds of de de domesticated animals. It includes all kinds of farm and ranch animals as well as household pets. You know, maybe you have a pet. Maybe you have several pets, who knows? Uh, but I hope that you do and I hope you enjoy them. Uh, we've had a variety of animals in our house. You know, we've, not only do we have labs, but we've had other types of dogs. We've had uh, hamsters and gerbils at different times. We've had fish, uh, but uh, uh, we've, that's the kind of, we never had a cat. Um, we, and I know some people that even have uh, ferrets as pets. So that's pretty crazy. Some people have pigs as pets. Some people have uh, ducks as pets. But it's important to know that God made animals after their kind. This means dogs can have puppies, but they can't have kittens. Cats have kittens, but they can't have puppies. Uh, a cow can birth a calf, but it can't give birth to a kid, a baby goat. Uh, there can be different breeds of cats, but there can't be animals that are half cat and half dog, or half horse and half cow. Uh, don't ask a farmer to show you a, a horo or a horse cow or that says moo, nay, moo, nay, um, or you can't have a sheep and a pig. Um, you know, you, you can't ask a pet shop person to show you a puppy cat or a kitten dog. A farmer and a pet shop person can only show you animals God have made after their kind, and that's true. Um, so Genesis 124 and, and 25 tells us that God made creeping things. Um, and he made everything that creepeth upon the earth. Insects, bugs, reptiles, rodents, and roaches. He made the tiny gnat, and he made the hairy rat. He made the mosquito and the mouse, the hamster and the housefly, the salamander and the centipede. It says that God made all of these creatures after their kind. Nothing could evolve from one kind of animal to another kind. Insects would always be insects, bugs would always be bugs, and reptiles would always be reptiles. So when you read the Bible, don't be surprised to find insects and bugs mentioned in the Bible. Mentioned are the ant, the beetle, the caterpillar, the canker worm, the earthworm, the flea, the fly, the gnat, the grasshopper, the hornet locust, the maggot, the moth, the palmer worm, and the spider. Even a mouse is mentioned in the Bible. God commanded his people not to eat a mouse, so don't ask for a mouse burger at the drive through restaurant. We don't eat mice, right? Not least you're super desperate. Um, and then it says that God also commanded the earth to bring forth the beast of the earth after his kind. These are the animals that would be different from farm animals and pets. We call them undomesticated or wild animals, such as tigers, lions, bears, wolves, leopards, elephants, hippos, and rhinoceroses. We, we've talked about all those. You know, God is all wise and all powerful, isn't he? He made the air to breathe, he made the water to drink, he made the plants to eat before he made the animals, and he made so many different kinds of animals, from the smallest to the biggest, from the animals we usually see only at the zoo to our favorite pets. He filled our world with these wonderful animals and animal life. 
We can understand why the psalmist wrote in Psalm 104, 24, O Lord, how manifold are thy works. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your riches. And so God created all of these animals uh, for our benefit. And he told us, be responsible for the animals. Make sure that you care for them. Make sure that you look after them. And so it's our responsibility as human beings to take care of the domesticated animals that we have and to fulfill their purpose and why they were created. Uh, and the same with the wild animals. You know, I love to hunt and fish. It's some of the favorite things that I do. But I also understand that we can't go out and kill every deer in Pennsylvania, right? We can only harvest a few to manage the herd uh, and, to, and, to, and to get meat from and eat the meat that comes from those animals. Uh, we can't go out and, and destroy their environment and where they live. You know, we have to live with alongside them. And we have to make sure that we're doing that. But at the same time, we also got to make sure they're not destroying our environment. And uh, destroying some of the things like the crops that sometimes they get after and eat all of the crops that the farmers are trying to raise and sell. So sometimes we have to manage the herds in different ways. Um, but... At the same time, God says, take care of things and manage them. Manage the natural world around you. Make sure that the resources are going to be there for people, for generations to utilize and to see and to care about. We always haven't been really good at that sometimes in our history. You know, um, in, this, in this country, we, we almost hunted wolves to extinction. We almost hunted the buffalo and the bison to extinction. Um, you know, I remember uh, reading an article one time that said that um, one of the things that people on the East Coast really, a delicacy that they really wanted, and you might find this a little gross, but they really were wanting the tongue of the buffalo. And so the price for the tongue of the buffalo became so expensive. And uh, these guys would go out and hunt these buffalo, and they would kill hundreds of buffaloes. And they would shoot them, and, and, and they would go out, and they would... They would go in and they would harvest the tongue. They would take the tongue out of the buffalo and they'd leave the rest of it to rot in the field. I mean, how, uh, how wasteful, how greedy was that? Because they could make so much money just taking the tongue, they left everything. They left the hide and they left the meat on the bone. And there would be hundreds and hundreds of buffalo dead just laying in these fields, rotting. That's not managing the herds well at all. Right? That's mismanagement. That's a terrible thing to do. And, uh, you know, if you're going to shoot an animal, uh, you f you're, you're thankful for the harvest and you utilize as much of the animal as you possibly can. And that's the, that's the proper way uh, to do it. They didn't at that time. And they almost hunted all of the buffalo to where they didn't exist anymore. Recently, we have seen uh, the, animal, the, the buffalo herds begin to make a comeback. You know, they almost lost all the, the bald eagles, and the bald eagles are starting to make a comeback. So we have to manage God's earth. We are stewards, and we have to manage the earth the right way. And we have to take care of it, and we have to take care of our animals and, and all of our, uh, you know, our waterways and everything that God created to give us that's beautiful and awesome. We have to manage it properly, and that's called conservationism. And that's something that God asks us to do. And we'll see that in next week's video, uh, how God uh, asks us to do that. But the animals are here for our benefit and our enjoyment. And I hope that you enjoy being around animals. If it's a zoo or you go to a fair or you have a, a relative or a friend that owns a farm with animals on it or you have your own pets, I hope that you are enjoying those and that you're thanking God for the beauty of his creation through the animals. Um, that uh, he's provided for us. And so I hope that uh, this has been a, a, a lesson of learning, and I also hope that you uh, are encouraged by the creation that God's given us. And, and really, guys and girls, that's what we want to see, is that, that great creation and understand it, respect it, love it, embrace it, and use it as a resource for our benefit. All right? Hey, let's have a word of prayer, and uh, then we will close it out. 
God, thank you so much for the creation of animals that live on the earth and for all the amazing things that you do uh, in our lives as a result of the animals that we're able to interact with. Lord, I just, I just pray that we would see creation as a way of worship, that we can worship you by seeing it and experiencing it and, and being responsible for it. And God, we just uh, ask that you would help us to do that, we'll, that we'll be smart and wise when it comes to animal life. Uh, Lord, that we'll care for it, we'll manage it, we'll celebrate it, and we'll thank you for providing it for us. Uh, to bless us as we see it, to bless us as we utilize that resource, whether we hunt or whether we, uh, however we uh, handle and use um, the resource that you've given us, that we'll do it responsibly, that we'll do it reliably, and that we'll do it to your honor and glory, like we do all things. Thank you, and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys and girls, next week we're going to come to the apex of our creation story. And uh, we're going to learn about that. So as you've been listening to this video and watching this video, what have you noticed that's new and different, right? We started out with the box. And now we have moved to the creation of what's inside the box, right? Why? It's to show us how God developed. This is just a little picture of, you know, we've taken what was here, the raw materials, and now we've made it into something uh, that's recognizable and that's and that's usable and so um, Keep watching. We may see some other things come down the road. All right. Have a great week and we will see you on the next video